Want to speak real Hindi from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at hindipod101.com. About three reasons having a native speaker partner can improve your language fluency. First, knowing a native speaker helps you better understand the culture. Knowing a native speaker gets you connected with the culture in ways that no lessons or textbooks ever could. Native speakers are better informed about the latest slang expressions and know interesting places to eat and hang out. Having a friend or partner who is a native speaker can dramatically improve your understanding of the language. In addition to language, you can learn about cultural practices, gestures, and relationships. Second, having a native speaker partner increases your exposure to the language. Practice makes perfect is a well-known expression that is certainly true for language learning. When you have a friend, romantic partner, or study buddy, you speak to them through text messages, phone calls, and basic interaction. These are all opportunities for you to practice the language. Making an effort to practice will help your vocabulary quickly expand beyond simple greetings, flirtatious words, and basic comments to deeper, more meaningful conversations. Third, a supportive partner is the best study aid you can find. We all make mistakes, especially when trying to learn a new language. But if you have a supportive partner, they can gently point out your mistakes and help you find better ways to express yourself. And if your native speaker study partner is also your romantic partner, your motivation will likely be even higher than someone who does not have a romantic relationship with a native speaker. Now, let's look at three ways our language learning program helps you learn even faster if you have a native speaker partner. First, all resources and materials are available in English and in your target language. Studying with a partner is special because it's an opportunity for both of you to learn a new language. That's why every single lesson, transcript, vocabulary list, and resource on our website is available in English and in your target language. You can learn from each other. Second, lessons are designed to help you understand and engage with culture. On our website, our focus is to help our students learn practical vocabulary and phrases that are actually used in everyday conversation. This means that from your very first lesson, you can start applying what you learn immediately. So if you want to go out to a restaurant, play games, or attend a social function with your partner, you'll have the vocabulary and phrases necessary to have a great time. Third, access to special resources dedicated to romantic phrases. If your study partner is your romantic partner, we have resources to help you communicate your feelings correctly. Our language learning program has special sections and tools to teach you love words, phrases, and cultural insights. Of course, please remember that simply being in a relationship is no substitute for studying. Communication is key to every relationship, whether romantic or not. If you fail to continue expanding your vocabulary and you stop learning the language on your own, your relationships may suffer or fizzle out. Without question, spending time with native speakers can help you dramatically improve your language proficiency. But this is no replacement for focused studying. It's essential to help facilitate better communication and master the language. Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing. But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. 
first, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors. Plus, tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. Being able to speak freely with native speakers is an amazing ability in itself. But being able to speak freely to a whole new group of people opens you up to possible new relationships. Most people don't realize that spending the time to build relationships in a foreign language can actually help you improve your language skills dramatically. In this video, we look at how making relationships in a foreign language can help you learn the language faster. The benefits of having friends and partners who speak a foreign language. First, it's motivational. One of the greatest struggles for anyone learning a second language is motivation. Nine times out of 10, learners start out their language learning journey with loads of enthusiasm, only to see it gradually wane over time. Try as they may, it's difficult to maintain the spark they once shared with their new language. So why not borrow energy from a different part of your life? When you make relationships with people in your target language, all the excitement of a new relationship carries directly over into your learning. Suddenly, you have a very rewarding reason to improve your skills and keep practicing. As your partner or your friends get involved, you will also have the advantage of a constant source of support and encouragement. Second, it makes language learning practical. Studying vocabulary and grammar is a vital part of language learning, whether you use a podcast, textbook, app, or find yourself in a classroom. However, as great as studying is, a language really only starts to come alive once you start using it in everyday life. There's a huge difference between a scripted conversation in a lesson plan and a real-life conversation with a native speaker. Building relationships with native speakers will give you the chance to talk in your target language often. Furthermore, it will be in a way that feels natural. You'll learn the words in the context, which is hugely important. Third, it's fun. One of the greatest benefits is that it allows you to practice without having it feel like practice. Oftentimes, you'll find yourself so wrapped up in the conversation that you forget you're using a foreign language. This takes a lot of the pressure off and helps you focus on communication over trying to speak absolutely perfectly. You also get to learn about a whole new culture from your partner or friends. So you're not only learning language skills, but also about the cultures that surround your target language. The risks of having friends and partners who speak a foreign language. First, it's easy to miscommunicate. When it comes to relationships, humans can easily misunderstand each other. 
So it can be hard when building relationships in your target language when you or your partner's lack of ability in each other's respective native tongue can lead to miscommunications that would otherwise be avoidable. Depending on the language you're speaking, a simple mistranslation or mispronounced word can drastically change the meaning of a sentence. As long as you can afford each other some extra patience and the benefit of the doubt, then you should be able to overcome this pitfall. Second, your language skills could suffer if your relationships don't work out. If all your language practice is wrapped up in one person and your relationship with that person doesn't work out, then your language learning could take a big hit. So it's best not to put all your hopes for language growth on one area, relationship or otherwise. You don't want to risk losing motivation, so try to find it in many different areas. An idea for building relationships in a foreign language. Make games out of getting to know one another. Sometimes, opening up in any new friendship or partnership can be hard. Add in the added struggle of a new language and it can feel impossible to share your true feelings with others. So instead of trying to take first interactions so seriously and talking about the usual things like the weather or work, try to ask new, interesting questions. Try to figure out what the other person's hobbies are without asking directly, or what kind of job they have. This will give you a chance to stretch your language skills in a new way, and you'll probably get some funny answers out of it too. Being comfortable being silly or making language mistakes is a great way to bond with someone, even if you've just met. Relationships in a foreign language have a lot more benefits to offer than drawbacks. Don't be scared to open up to people and make mistakes. When you start out learning a foreign language, everything is exciting. You pick up new words and basic phrases fairly quickly. The first time you say a greeting or answer the question, how are you, you might even get a little thrill. Speaking fluently doesn't feel that far off. And at this point, it really does seem like language learning isn't all that difficult. But after a week or two, things begin to change. After a few weeks of study, you start to hit walls as you're faced with strange grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Everything about learning a new language seemed promising and hopeful before, but now you start to realize how difficult it's going to be. Speaking the language now feels like a long, far-off goal that you may or may not achieve one day. But don't let the innocence of being an absolute beginner or the disillusionment of being an experienced learner discourage you from learning. Speaking a new language may not be as far off as you thought. In this video, we'll look at three tips to help you practice your speaking skills, no matter what level you're at. Number one, practice with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is by far one of the most effective things you can do to improve your speaking abilities. Think of speaking a foreign language as riding a bike. After a certain point, you can't read or theorize about how to do it. You have to actually do it. If you can practice speaking with native speakers who correct you and give good feedback, then you'll be well on your way to improving your speaking. But where can you find native speakers to practice with? If you live in or near a major city, there's a good chance there are some native speakers there. You might even get lucky and discover an entire community. Do a little research into the demographics of your city, or simply keep your eyes open the next time you go through town. You can also attend a language exchange or cultural event. Meetup is a site for local enthusiast groups, and there are usually some language-speaking clubs or cultural clubs there. If you're unable to find native speakers where you live, then jump online and find them there. There are a lot of free online exchanges that allow you to connect with other language learners from all over the globe via text, audio, or video chat. Look for a speaker who is learning your native language. You can spend an hour or so helping each other in your respective target languages. This is a highly practical and helpful way to learn. It's also a great way to learn more directly about the culture you're studying in a real way. Number two, devote some time to learning pronunciation. Pronunciation often isn't the first skill people think of working on when learning a foreign language, but that doesn't mean that it isn't important. Truth be told, you don't absolutely need a great accent to speak or understand every language. However, a decent accent can vastly improve your listening and speaking abilities in ways you might not expect. Being able to pronounce words and sounds makes it a lot easier for you to remember and understand new words simply by hearing them. If you can physically make a sound with your mouth, then you can mentally remember it. Once you have a good accent, the new language won't sound as foreign as it once did, and you'll be able to understand rapid speech, as well as pick up the definition of new words based on their conversational context. But how can you improve your accent? 
If you're serious about developing your accent, then you'll want to dissect the language's sound system into its individual parts. First by letters, then individual words, followed by whole phrases. Start doing some mild research on the phonetics of your target language. You don't have to get too technical here. Just try to get an idea of some of the main differences between it and your native language. Find out where native speakers usually put their tongue while saying certain sounds. Or pay attention to the shape of their mouths when they speak. Is it open or closed? These subtle differences are what really help you improve. Once you get the letters down, start listening to native audio and compare your pronunciation to the native speakers. Our language learning program's playback feature is a great way to accomplish this. Take a phrase from a lesson and start by practicing the individual words, playing the audio back at a slower speed and then again at a regular speed. After comparing your speech to the audio, combine the words to make complete phrases, imitating the intonation of the native speakers. This precise method of pronunciation practice is one of the most efficient and effective ways to learn pronunciation. Number three, imitate, don't just repeat. Anytime you speak, do your best to imitate the native speakers you've heard and practice with. Match the way their intonation rises and falls. Pay attention to their word order. It's even a good idea to match some of their body language. This degree of imitation will probably feel weird at first, but it reinforces fluency in the language and breaks you out of the parrot trap where you simply learn and speak through rote memorization or repetition. This is a common problem that's often cited with other less effective language learning methods. Speaking a language is like playing music or dancing. You don't wanna just know it. You wanna live in the moment and feel it as you use it. You don't sit and think of what you're going to say in your native language before you say it. Why would you expect to do the same in a new one? Don't let ruffled expectations make you think that speaking a new language is impossible. Yes, it's difficult, but it probably isn't as difficult as you think it is. With a little determination and some faithful practice, you might be surprised how quick and how far you can progress. Use these tips to better practice the language and see real results in your speaking abilities. For some, learning a new language seems to come naturally. For others, the entire process feels more like a tooth and nail struggle. However, if you've had a negative experience learning a new language at one point in time, don't let that discourage you from trying again. The truth is that learning any language is never easy, but it's definitely possible. Sometimes the difference between success and failure has less to do with your abilities or talents and a lot more to do with the way you look at things. In this video, we're going to look at how to avoid five serious mistakes made by new language learners. Number one, listen before you speak. Being slow to speak and quick to listen is good life advice, whether or not you're learning a foreign language. Effective listening is essential to communication. As a beginner, there is a tendency to concentrate so much on what you're going to say and how you're going to say it that you can completely miss the meaning or heart of what the other person is trying to communicate. Not only will this impair your ability to listen in your target language, it will also stall what little conversation you had going. Remember that conversations are a two-way street. If you're speaking more than listening, then you actually have more of a monologue on your hands than a dialogue. The inputs of language learning, listening and reading, are just as important as the outputs, speaking and writing. For a beginner, inputs are even more crucial, as they are the main way you acquire new vocabulary. We even go so far to say that for new students, the best method for learning involves more listening than it does speaking, though that may change with higher proficiency levels. Number two, don't be embarrassed when you do speak. People's next mistake usually comes from the other side of the spectrum, where new learners are too scared or embarrassed to contribute to a conversation. The fear of making mistakes and embarrassing yourself can paralyze your language learning. It's vital to remember that everyone makes mistakes, even native speakers had to find their way through the language when they were children. Making mistakes while learning a new language is inevitable, but it's also a good thing. The faster you make mistakes, the quicker you can correct them and move on with your learning. So instead of being afraid to make mistakes, try looking at them as steps towards progress. In reality, that's what they really are. Number three, don't fixate on minor issues. If taken in all at once, a new language can feel overwhelming to learn. It's so easy to get discouraged by all your little mistakes and conversational mishaps and you lose sight of the progress you're making. 
In addition to mistakes, you'll also come across plateaus, where you study and practice consistently, but don't see any results for a significant amount of time. But whether you face errors or plateaus, remember that these things are minor obstacles on the road to fluency. The most important thing is not to give up. Stick with it. If you stay persistent, your mistakes will be corrected and your abilities will improve. But if you slow down or throw in the towel completely, then you'll either subvert your progress or nix it altogether. So remember that as long as you're still studying and learning the language, you can't lose. It might feel like you're losing the battle for language learning for a little while, but hang in there. A practical way to help you stay motivated is to make small weekly goals. Research shows that goal setting has a significant impact on learning. Try picking one aspect of grammar or a collection of new words or phrases to study for the next seven days. At the end of the week, check your progress and measure your success. Setting little benchmarks like this will give you a rightful sense of accomplishment. Number four, remember that immersion isn't magical. A lot of people think that by moving to a foreign country, they will learn the language by osmosis. But whether you learn abroad or at home, you still need to study and practice the language. Living in a new country gives you way more opportunities to do this than staying at home. But if you don't consciously take advantage of these opportunities while living abroad, it won't benefit your language learning. If you're an expat living in a foreign country, there's a natural inclination to hang out around other expats. Learning a language and living in a foreign culture is hard and uncomfortable. For better or worse, we're often drawn to the easier road. If you made the decision to study abroad, then you want to hang out with native speaking people as much as possible. You have the rest of your life to be with people who speak your language. This doesn't mean ignore your expat friends. Just be sure that you're giving proper attention to your language learning. Languages are better lived than they are learned. Number five, be open-minded. Languages are better lived than they are learned. When learning a new language, your brain will want to conform the new grammar and vocabulary to your native language norms and grammar rules. Ignore your brain on this one. At first, you might feel completely wrong saying a sentence that is in fact correct. After a certain point in language learning, there is a switch that goes off. When your brain finally realizes that you're not speaking your native language, but a new one altogether. This could take a while though, especially if this is your first time learning a new language. Until then, do what you know is correct, even if it feels a bit weird when you say it. The same goes for culture. Just as you want to be open to the differences in the language, don't forget to be open to the differences in the culture too. Hopefully this video helped you shift your thinking and approach language learning in a way that will help you become fluent faster. And that you'll learn to enjoy the journey towards fluency and savor the language for its own sake. That's probably the biggest language learning secret there is. Most people who learn a foreign language learn it so that they can one day have real life conversations with native speakers. When you start out learning and crack open your first textbook or listen to your first podcast, having a real conversation can feel like a fantasy. When everything about a language feels new, it can be overwhelming. But this couldn't be further from the truth. While it does take a significant amount of time and effort to become fluent, having a conversation might not be as far off as you think. In this video, we'll look at three ways you can boost your conversational skills and start talking to native speakers. Number one, find native speakers and practice with them. It's unlikely you live near a big group of native speakers to practice with. If you happen to be in a major or international city, your chances may be better. Check and see if your city has a general language exchange. Chances are there could be a native speaker there who is also trying to learn another language. Practicing in person with a native speaker is probably the most interesting option for honing your speaking skills. But if you can't find anyone where you live, the next best option is to look online. Luckily for language learners, the past 10 years or so have seen an explosion in online language exchange sites. On these websites, you can search for someone who is a native speaker of your target language and is also learning your native language. The idea behind a language exchange is that you communicate with them via video or text chat, and half of the time, they help you practice your target language, and for the other half, you help them practice theirs. Practicing via an online language exchange is a highly effective way to practice your conversational skills. Number two, work on pronunciation. Pronunciation is often an overlooked skill when it comes to learning a foreign language. Most people think of a good foreign accent as a luxury rather than a necessity. 
But what most people don't talk about is how having a good accent boosts your listening and comprehension skills. If you can hear a sound from a foreign language and know how to make it yourself, then you're more likely to understand native speakers when they talk at normal speed, and you're also more likely to remember any new words or phrases you come across. Having a good accent means that the language no longer sounds foreign. Instead, it sounds familiar, maybe even natural. So how do you go about perfecting your accent? The best way is to break down the language into its individual sounds. Make note of any sounds that are the same or similar to your native language and of those that are different. Of the sounds that are different, spend your time practicing the ones that you find the hardest to say correctly. After you're comfortable with the individual sounds, you can start linking together words and phrases. This is where accent practice starts to get really fun and interesting. Get your hands on some native speaker audio from a TV show, song, or podcast. Play the audio back and listen closely a few times. Take note of how words blend together in speech. Then, do your best to imitate what you hear, trying to match the speaker's emphasis and intonation. Our language learning program's playback feature is perfect for this. Record yourself and compare it to the original recording. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable with the audio selection, and then move on to something more difficult. This is how you can break through the accent barrier and really start to make the language your own. Number three. Learn phrases, not just individual words. Learning grammar and individual words is great, but it's not the only approach you should take if you want to speak fluently. In addition to your regular grammar and vocabulary, try learning whole phrases, even if you aren't totally sure how they work grammatically. Learn phrases that are specific to your needs. It's a good idea to learn phrases that are grouped around a certain setting or subject, such as simple greetings or introductions, questions for getting to know someone, or traveling comfortably. You can even learn filler phrases, which you can use so that you have something to say when, well, you don't know what to say. Learning phrases like this will help you become conversational faster. You may not understand what you're saying literally, but as long as you know the general meaning behind the phrase and know when to use it, you'll be able to talk like a native. Eventually, your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary should catch up with the phrases you know. Learning a new language should feel like an adventure. There will be plateaus and periods in your learning where it feels like you're hitting a wall, but being able to speak with native speakers and have real conversations will help you combat language fatigue. After all, talking to someone face-to-face -face in a foreign language is one of the main reasons we start learning in the first place. Great work! Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.